Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Now this one's slightly different. I did a race earlier on today in the Global Mazda at Charlotte Motor Speedway and something happened that shocked me to the core. Now I've seen some dodgy things whilst I've been sim racing but I don't think I've ever seen anything as calculated and intentional as this. Now the purpose of this video is to try and get us all to get together and get rid of these people off sim racing for good, especially on iRacing where we can protest people and get rid of people that way. Don't tolerate this kind of behavior. I'm sure we all don't anyway, but there's times when if you're not directly involved, then you don't do anything about it. This didn't involve me at all, but I'm straight up and down 100% gonna report this guy as i'm sure will the guy that was affected anyway i've kind of tried to construct things give you a bit of a backstory in relation to what led up to the incident so hopefully it will make sense it's not a very long video let me know what you think in the comments guilty or not guilty i think we can prove premeditation and motive in this video so let me know what you think let's get on with it so the cars we're going to talk about are this one, the number four car, which is the Offender, and this car, number eight, which is the Aggrieved. The number eight car is starting directly behind the number four car that you can see there, the red and black one, directly behind the green car. So we start off the race on board with the number eight car. Now... The reason I'm making this video is that I want to get these drivers off the iRacing service. Yes, things like this happen in every sim, but iRacing is a little bit different because we can protest drivers and for the likes of this, they'll be having a nice long break from iRacing. Now we'll go on board with the number four car, following the white car round. The white car's lines look incredible, by the way. I don't know who's driving that white car, but his lines look amazing but coming around to the end of lap one no dramas everybody's happy as larry so we skip forward a couple of laps on lap number three now the number eight car gets a cracking run onto the oval section at charlotte and he's going to go for a move into the chicane now the number four car messes this up but so does the number eight car he messes up the exit but this is relevant in relation to the first incident which sparks off the retaliation so the number four car has just been overtaken but he's got a better run out the chicane so he's going to go around the outside into the final chicane but as you'll see he's a little bit late on the brakes and he messes up his entry um, and as a result his exit's compromised is slower and he gets tapped from behind and shoved into the wall but we'll go on board with the number eight uh, as you can see he couldn't really do a lot about this he maybe could have anticipated that he was going to be slower but the guy in front had no brake lights on and that's just one of those things so we'll skip forward one lap onto lap four same again number eight car gets a good run down into the chicane goes to the move clean as you like but his exit's not the best the number four car gets a better exit, so the number eight car decides to go down to the apron, but that's not really relevant. It just goes to the apron, but gets back on track with no dramas. Number four car goes around the outside, and this time it manages to break in plenty of time and make the chicane, so there's no incident on this lap. Just the same move every time. The number four car is obviously not the best into the first chicane. So we'll follow number eight car around this lap. Now, I left this lap in because this lap precedes probably the, the main reason why the number four car was raging. Uh, but I wanted to show that the number eight car had opportunity, if he was that kind of driver, to get rid of the number four car, especially here at the top of the hill going into this right hand. And he was close enough. If you wanted to, you could have just nudged him, sent him off. I'll have your opposition, thank you very much. But he didn't. So for me, he's not a dirty driver. So, going on to the back straight. 
once again the number eight car gets a better run and it closes up the gap to the number four car but not as much as he had done on previous laps so he doesn't go for the move but he does break a little bit later than the number four car and as a result gives him a little tap which sends him spinning off but I don't think that was deliberate but the number four car gets hit by that car and loses his front end so no doubt the number four car at this point is absolutely boiling but he doesn't do anything he waits a couple of laps so now going on to lap number eight and this is when things get a little bit sinister so instead of going straight on here he decides to make a little bit of a detour and goes down a road which i don't actually recognize to be honest but this car, number eight car, is blissfully unaware. He's just doing his laps. He's going round. And as you can see from the overhead view, the car at the top of the screen is the number four car. He's taken a little bit of a detour. And the car at the bottom is the number eight car. So as it stands, the number eight car is going to be directly behind the number four car. But the number eight car won't realise until the number four car pops up on his relative so as we go on to the back straight, you'll see that there he is, the number four car, directly ahead of the number eight car. Now, I'd be thinking at this point, hang on a minute, this is all a little bit suspect. Number four car wasn't there a second ago. But you'll see the number four car, he slows down a bit, but he's not really going that slow, but he does slow down enough for the number eight car to catch up. So the number eight car is obviously thinking to himself now, hang on, this is dodgy. I don't like the look of this. Number four car is not that slow, is he? He's not that slow, but then as we approach the braking zone for the final chicane, the number four slams on his brakes. And what do you know, the number eight car rams into the back of him and has to take evasive action over the chicane. Obviously gets a slow down. But the number four car straight ahead He's unaffected. He's not that slow. But the number eight car behind loses a position because he got the slow down. That's directly affecting his race right there. So he's lost a position because of this individual here. So we'll just stay on board for a moment with the number four car. Just to highlight that his car actually isn't that slow. He's lapping reasonably well. The car behind isn't catching him that much on the infield. There's no reason for, especially the number eight car, to catch him up at all. Uh, but this is when things take a turn for the worse. So we'll go on board now with the number eight car. As you can see, the guy in front of him is, is the one that he lost the position to. Then on the outside there is the number four car. Now, I'd be worried at this point. The number four car there, you know you've had contact with him. Something's definitely not right. But he doesn't do anything before the chicane. He goes through reasonably well. But then you'll see the number four car pull to the side. Now, it's always a worry this when you're in a race when this happens. You always wonder, is this guy going to do something stupid? So, the number eight car is obviously affected because he's let the number 12 car through. And as they both go through, you'll see here that the number four car just absolutely wellies him off the track. There, have that. And as we look from another angle, you can see he just waits for him to go through, gets on the gas, and then completely takes him out. Unbelievable. And we'll look at it one more time. absolutely disgraceful behavior from that guy and then he proceeds to do some victory donuts and then gets himself disqualified as a result absolutely shocking so there we go i'm sure you'll all agree that guy deserves a long holiday from i racing i've been there in the skipper race just a few days ago in my mind, for a split second, I thought about taking the guy out. But that disappears normally after two or three seconds, and you get your head down and you carry on. That guy waited 
three or four laps before he made his move and did what he had to do, which is unacceptable. I'm sure you'll agree. Let me know what you think of this video in the comments anyway. And please, please, if you see something similar, even if it doesn't involve you, please report. That's the only way we're going to get rid of these guys off the service. We pay every month to be on iRacing. It's not cheap. We all know that. The only way we can get better racing if we can get rid of the guys that do that. So if you did like this video, if you wouldn't mind giving it a thumbs up, that'd be appreciated. And if you want to see more, you can click this icon down here if you want to subscribe. Straight over there will be my latest video. And up in the top corner will be a video that YouTube thinks that you might like. As always, thanks for watching. See you later. Cheers.